4,000 tons of tunnel boring machines, $10 billion, and a dream that nearly broke Melbourne. December 2025. The first trucks roll through the Westgate Tunnel. Francis Street residents step outside and hear something they haven't experienced in decades. Silence. No more diesel engines thundering past their front doors at 3 a.m. The relief is overwhelming. But getting here cost $10 billion and took a decade. What started as a $5.5 billion solution became one of Australia's most expensive infrastructure nightmares. The uncomfortable truth about building mega-projects in modern cities is that everything costs more than promised, takes longer than planned, and unearths problems nobody saw coming. To understand how we got here, we have to go back to 2015, when Melbourne thought it had found an easy answer. The original vision was simple, a $5.5 billion tunnel that would solve Melbourne's west side traffic crisis once and for all. No more trucks rumbling through residential neighbourhoods. No more Francis Street residents living under siege from port traffic that had turned their quiet streets into industrial highways. The engineering challenge seemed straightforward. Dig a four-kilometre tunnel beneath established infrastructure and redirect 9,000 trucks per day away from residential areas. Politicians promised completion by 2022. Contractors promised cost certainty. Everyone promised this would transform Melbourne's West. Then construction began in January 2018, and reality hit immediately. Deep beneath Melbourne's West lay contaminated soil laced with PFAS, toxic forever chemicals that had seeped into the ground from decades of industrial activity. The original environmental assessments had missed it entirely. Suddenly, every cubic meter of excavated dirt became hazardous waste, requiring specialized treatment. Environmental cleanup alone added hundreds of millions to the budget. Then came contractor disputes over who would pay for the contamination remediation. Work slowed to a crawl as lawyers argued over liability while tunnel boring machines sat idle burning through $50,000 per day in standby costs. But the real nightmare was just beginning. The PFAS contamination wasn't contained to one area. It spread along the entire tunnel route like an underground toxic river. Every meter of progress required soil testing, treatment protocols, and specialized disposal. What should have been routine excavation became a hazmat operation. Meanwhile, residents on Francis Street continued living with the thunder of trucks. Port traffic increased by 15% during construction, making their situation worse, not better. Francis Street resident Maria Santos described the ordeal. First, they promised the trucks would be gone by 2022. Then it was 2024. Now it's 2025, and we've had five years of construction noise on top of the truck noise. Some days I can't tell which is worse. Truck driver Jim Mitchell, who'd been running the port route for 15 years, watched his operating costs skyrocket as detours and restrictions multiplied. They kept changing the rules about where we could drive and when. Some days it took three hours to do what used to take 40 minutes. The promised relief felt like a cruel joke as construction delays stretched from months to years. By 2020, the $5.5 billion project had ballooned to over $10 billion. The 2022 completion date became 2025. The simple solution had become Melbourne's most complex infrastructure challenge, and they were barely halfway through digging the tunnels. Some projects become nightmares, not because of what you're building, but because of what you find buried underneath. The tunnel boring machines, massive 15-meter-wide mechanical monsters, were designed to chew through rock and clay. They weren't designed for an underground toxic waste site. Each TBM weighed 4,000 tons and cost $50 million, but they couldn't move forward without contaminated soil protocols that slowed progress to a fraction of normal speed. The PFAS contamination created a three-dimensional puzzle. Engineers had to map the underground plume of toxic chemicals while managing groundwater that could spread contamination across Melbourne's west. Every drop of water pumped from the tunnel workings required treatment before disposal. 
Construction workers, concerned about PFAS exposure, demanded additional safety measures and health monitoring. Work stoppages became routine as unions negotiated protective equipment protocols. Each delay cost millions, while the tunnel boring machines sat motionless underground. Tunneling through contaminated ground required specialized ventilation systems and concrete tunnel segments with special coatings to prevent PFAS from leaching through. Residents above the tunnel route reported vibrations and ground settlement. Houses developed cracks, forcing even more cautious excavation methods. The contaminated soil problem reached crisis levels when testing revealed PFAS levels 50 times higher than safe guidelines in some areas. Entire sections of tunnel had to be redesigned with additional protective barriers, adding months to the schedule and hundreds of millions to the cost. Sometimes the most impressive thing about a project isn't what went right. It's what got built despite everything going wrong. The breakthrough came when engineers developed new PFAS-resistant sealing techniques that allowed the tunnel boring machines to maintain progress. Against all odds, construction continued. The TBMs, nicknamed Bella and Vida, finally found their rhythm through the contaminated ground. Working in shifts around the clock, they carved out twin tunnels stretching four kilometers beneath Melbourne's west, each tunnel wide enough to fit two shipping containers side by side. The engineering achievements were remarkable despite the chaos. The TBMs installed concrete tunnel segments, each weighing 15 tons and fitted with specialized PFAS-resistant seals. The tunnels plunge 40 meters below ground at their deepest point, passing beneath the Maribyrnong River with just meters of clearance from existing infrastructure. Above ground, the project's most visible feature took shape, the Westgate Tunnel's twin towers rising 90 meters into the sky. These 90-meter concrete giants serve as massive ventilation systems designed to extract vehicle emissions and maintain air quality in the tunnels below. Each tower contains fans powerful enough to completely change the air in the tunnels every few minutes. The toll system infrastructure became a project within a project. Engineers installed electronic gantries equipped with cameras and sensors capable of tracking vehicles at highway speeds. The system can process 100,000 vehicle movements per day, automatically charging tolls based on vehicle size and time of travel. Safety systems throughout the tunnels rival those found in the world's most advanced underground roadways. CCTV cameras monitor every meter of tunnel. Fire suppression systems can flood sections with foam in under 60 seconds. Emergency exits every 120 meters connect to dedicated escape tunnels that lead directly to the surface. The final construction phase involved connecting the tunnels to Melbourne's existing freeway network, a feat requiring the temporary closure of sections of the Westgate Freeway during overnight work windows. Each connection point had to be engineered to handle 80,000 vehicles per day while maintaining structural integrity for the next century. The aftermath of any mega project tells two stories, what it delivered and what it cost to get there. December 2025 brought an eerie calm to Francis Street. Residents stepped onto their front porches and experienced something extraordinary, the absence of noise. Maria Santos, who had campaigned for the tunnel for over a decade, described the moment. You don't realize how loud your life has become until the noise stops. I can hear birds again. The traffic data confirmed the transformation. Francis Street, which had endured 9,000 heavy vehicles daily, now sees fewer than 600, a 93% drop in truck movements through residential streets. Air quality monitors show a 40% reduction in diesel particulates across Melbourne's inner west. But the relief came with a cost, literally. The toll pricing reality hit commuters hard, Peak hour tunnel usage costs $6.54 for cars and $25 for trucks, making it one of Australia's most expensive road tolls. Many drivers, particularly locals making short trips, continue using surface streets rather than paying the premium. The true cost breakdown reveals where the extra $4.7 billion went. $2.1 billion for PFAS remediation 
and environmental cleanup. $1.8 billion in contractor settlements and delays. $600 million for enhanced safety systems and $200 million for community compensation programs. Public sentiment remains divided. Westside residents celebrate their liberation from truck traffic, while taxpayers across Melbourne question whether any road project justifies a $10 billion price tag. The tunnel processes 50,000 vehicles daily, roughly half its design capacity, as toll prices keep many drivers on alternative routes. Melbourne got its tunnel, but at twice the promised cost and three years behind schedule. The Westgate Tunnel stands as both triumph and cautionary tale, proof that even the most necessary infrastructure comes with a price nobody wants to pay until they have to. Share your thoughts below and subscribe for more stories about the projects that reshape our cities, for better and worse.